Now it is my privilege to share with you my friend and champion for students, Midway ISD Superintendent, Dr. Chris Allen. I'm honored to share a few details about his journey. He was named superintendent at Midway ISD after nine successful years at Marble Falls ISD. He has a doctorate from the University of Texas in Austin, as well as bachelor and master's degrees from the University of Texas at Austin and an associate degree from Tarrant County. Among his significant leadership outcomes are closing achievement gaps everywhere he has served, developing positive staff morale, accomplishing operational improvements and physical efficiency, and modeling dedication to building relationships through student services and community relations. A former and current colleague describes Dr. Alling as putting students and relationships first and as being a servant leader who will be visible and collaborative in the community. He is a significant dual credit partner and one or two of his students are graduating today. So I introduce to you my friend and your friend, Dr. Chris Allen, a genuine champion for our community. Good morning. I would like to start by saying thank you to uh, Ms. McCown and our board of directors from NCC. Thank you for allowing me to visit with you today. It is true that I am the superintendent of schools for Midway ISD. And if you were to walk into my office, you would see a number of different things, photos of my children, a little statuette of Jesus watching disciples feet. And over by my desk, you would see my diploma from the University of Texas in Austin, where it describes the date and the occasion at which I was conferred my doctorate in educational leadership. Based on that, you would think that you know something about me. And no matter how much you look at that framed diploma, all you will know is that I have an earned doctorate from the University of Texas in Austin. And yet, what I know is that that tells you absolutely nothing about who I am or about my journey in receiving that level of education. See, I grew up in a home that had two parents that were loving and encouraging, but neither of whom had a college degree. They believed in education, but they had not experienced it at the post-secondary level. I grew up in a home that some might call poor. I'll let you label it however you want. I know that all the way through middle school and high school, I ate free lunch. And I know I, the reason I know that so clearly is I had to go through a different line than everyone else. Um, so I remember that. Um, I made good grades in school and was very active in athletics, but lived in a home that struggled to keep its head above water and at times demonstrated levels of dysfunction. We moved a lot. I went to three different high schools and moved to Texas halfway through my senior year in high school. That meant that if I was going to go to college at all, I was going to have to pay out-of-state tuition. I had come to the conclusion toward the end of my senior year in high school that I wasn't going to go to college because it was unaffordable. I couldn't afford regular college, much less college based on out-of-state tuition. And my English teacher came to me one day and she said, Chris, if I could get you into school for free, would you attend? And her name was Kathy Pruitt. I said, Miss Pruitt, I'm pretty angry at the world right now, but I'm not stupid. If I can go to school for free, I'll go. And she gave me the paperwork to apply for a scholarship to attend what in those days was called Tarrant County Junior College. It's now called Tarrant County Community College. And I was able to attend because I had a scholarship that paid for my tuition and my books, nothing else. So I lived at home all the way through school. I had friends who'd gone to the big schools and the big universities, and they would talk and write about going to the games and living in the dorms and doing the things. And I was working 40 hours a week and taking 15 hours a semester. 
I graduated from TCJC in 1993 with an associate's arts degree. Immediately after that, I took a semester off for two reasons. I was broke and had no money, and I had no idea what I needed to do next to continue going to school. I knew I wanted to be a teacher, I just hadn't figured out how yet. The good news was, because I had good grades and had established my ability to be successful at the college level, there was a university in Arlington, Texas, who was willing to scholarship my tuition. And so I finished my bachelor's degree at the University of Texas in Arlington. You may not know much about UTA, but let me just tell you, 40,000 students, 90% of which are commuters, there was no football team, okay? And it was very much a working person's school. I worked 40 hours a week and took between 15 and 18 semesters there because I still wanted to graduate on time even though I'd taken a semester off. And so I worked very hard to get through that process and then graduated with my bachelor's degree and entered the workforce as a teacher. I did do some other things. I got a master's degree from the University of Texas at Arlington, worked for several years, and then eventually did earn my doctorate at the University of Texas in Austin. Why do I share that story with you and why do I think it's meaningful on a day like today? Because I have far more in common with you than I do with the people who go straight to Baylor, straight to A&M, straight to UT, straight to Rice, straight to name the university of your liking and skip right through school and come out with tremendous debt <laughs> and a different set of experiences than I had. I have great affection and um, tremendous appreciation for those of you sitting in front of me today and all the families and friends and supporters who are behind you. Because I learned some things in that process that I think that you have probably learned as well. One of the things I learned and that I share every chance I get is that there are multiple pathways to success. I am sure somewhere along your path, someone has told you or you have thought to yourself, this can't be done. It's not affordable, it's too hard, I don't have the support, the, the coursework is too difficult. And the fact of the matter is, what we know that not everyone in the world knows is you can do anything if you'll spend enough time searching for the path that works for you and allows you to get from where you are to where you want to be. I hope you cling to that lesson after today. There are multiple paths to success. Don't let anyone tell you there's only one way to get where you're going. It's not true. And I'm living proof of it, and so are you. The second thing I would share with you that I learned through that process is no one achieves anything meaningful without deep and meaningful support from others. In a book written called Big Potential by Sean Aker, he says the number one predictor of success at Harvard University is whether or not a student has others around them, friends, colleagues, family members, who support them in the pursuit of their goal to make their lives better. It's not enough to have people in your life that are special to you. You need to have people in your life that are special to you and want you to achieve the goals that you have identified for yourself. You need people around you who will remind you of what you ought to do, not what you want to do. I would argue that it is actually probably the strongest differentiator between success and failure. The people who've acquired the self-discipline to most consistently choose what they ought to do, study, eat broccoli, get extra sleep, instead of do what they want to do, hang out all night, eat candy, and stay up late, are the ones who tend to have more success in life. Don't eat broccoli all the time, you'll hate life. But my point is, make the choice that aligns with your goals consistently, and you'll get where you're going. How do you do that well? By surrounding yourself with people who will encourage you in that pursuit when you're having moments of weakness. 
I think the third most important thing I learned in the process is that we must have and maintain at all times hope that it inspires action. I get nervous when people talk to me about hope and then sit on their hands as if simply having hope will cause some magic genie to drop in their lap and give them what it is they want. You must believe at all times that you can grasp the things that you're working for while at the same time putting plans in place to get where you're going. Um, hope is believing in the things unseen. Hope with action is believing in those things so much that you act as if they're real even though they haven't occurred yet. I'll tell you a quick anecdote about that. So I told you that I got my doctorate degree from the University of Texas in Austin. When I was accepted into the doctorate program, I was actually living in Fort Worth, Texas. My wife and I talked about it and we prayed about it and I was accepted into that program in late April and they told me I was supposed to report for my first class the first Monday in June. In one month, we sold my house, loaded everything into a big U-Haul, and took off from Fort Worth to Austin. And when we got in that U-Haul and started driving, I did not have a job, and I had no place to stay. And I had a wife and two small children, like babies. And uh, I cannot tell you that there weren't several occasions that my wife said, I'm not sure this is a great idea. But after prayerful consideration, we knew it's what the Lord wanted for us. And as we were driving to Austin, we were calling apartment complexes, trying to find a place that would let us rent for three months until I could find a job. I knew I was supposed to be in that program. I knew it was the path that the Lord had laid in front of me. And so I started walking it, believing that we would figure it out as we go. Sometimes people hear me tell that story and they think I'm crazy. Sometimes they wonder where I get that courage. Uh, I may be a little crazy, I'll let you decide. But where does one develop that courage? We know. You and I, we know. Because we've had to do some things that other people hadn't had to do. And as a result of that, we have a strength not everybody has. And I would encourage you to always remember that. And so in your program, it says this is the challenge to the graduates. Term almost makes me uncomfortable. I'm so proud of you, I don't know what I would challenge you with except for this thought. Because you and I both know there's multiple paths to success, let's remember to be slow to judge the path or timing of another person. We knew we had to have people who were willing to accept us where we were in our path, and so let's remember to do that for others. Because we know we didn't get here on our own, but we had family, friends, supporters all around us, Let's remember to be that for someone else and speak truth with love when it's needed. And because we know that we can't do anything without hope that inspires action, let's be careful both in word and deed not to take the hope from another person. Because you are now writing a story that you're gonna share with someone else one day and it's gonna inspire them to be everything you are today and potentially everything you're going to be. And so I hope you enjoy the rest of this day and I hope you take time to celebrate this with friend and family, friends and family. But what I hope for you more than anything is that the lessons you've learned in this process become rocket fuel for your soul as you continue to soar to greater heights. Thank you.